I love being me. And who am I, you ask? I am the Great One himself. Cynical Libertarian Society, founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society. CYNLIBSOC.com on the interwebs. Jesus fucking Christ, it's November. This month, I need to look up the exact day. I may have already missed it. This month is the 10 year anniversary of Stating the Obvious podcast. 10 years I've been doing this podcast. Started out as a right wing minarchist, made the transition to full blown anarcho capitalist. 10 fucking years of badassness. 10 fucking years of podcasting. So when you motherfuckers come out to me with your fucking, I've been podcasting for three months. Fuck you. Oh, fuck you. I've been doing this for 10 fucking years. And speaking of how badass I am, God damn it. Here I am being all smooth and everything, and I miss the ashtray with my ashes. I'm having a cigarette because I am so goddamn good that I needed a cigarette after this. I was sitting around, I was going, hmm, I'm not going to have time to do a full blown episode of Stating the Obvious. Plus, we got our first snow of the year here in Fort Collins. And Randy is busy with other stuff. And it's like, I, so I had to do an anarchy moment. Just because Randy was not available and I had time constraints, yada, yada, yada. So I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do an anarchy moment about? And then my life just happens. So here's the deal. For those of you, shit, where are my notes? See, if Randy was here, this would not be happening. Here we go. Actually, it would because it doesn't matter. Even when she's here to babysit my ass, I'm still unorganized. In the previous three editions of Stating the Obvious, where I've been talking about girls, I talked about assorted girls in my life. And I mentioned girl number B. Super cute redhead with freckles. Told me that she would meet me. We'd go out to a particular day, particular destination, then ended up flaking out because she is too busy. And what was her other... Oh yeah, she was sorry for the false hope. And that's what led me to explain the differences about when you owe people honesty and when you don't, right? You owe people honesty to say, if you're not going to go out with them, you say you're not going to go out. You don't lie about it. But you don't owe honesty in the sense that you have to explain to them why you don't want to go out to them, go out with them. Right, so the girl has to say to the guy, no, I don't want to go out to you. She owes him that much. She owes him to not lie about that part. But she owes him no explanation for why Right? I mean, if she chooses to lie and say, I have a boyfriend, or you know, I have to do my nails, or my parrot is having an existentialist crisis, or whatever, I mean, you can do that. But the thing to keep in mind, this is, this is a hard thing for us humans, I think, is to, because I, I fall into this all the time, I will feel like I owe somebody an explanation. Like, I'll be, somebody will say, I'll say, no, I don't have time to do that. And then there's this thing, like, I need to explain. You really don't. We really don't need to explain to other people. We need to give other people a clear yes or no and stick to it, whether it's dating. You know, the other analogy I thought of is if you're at a party. And none of this has anything to do with what I was going to talk about or why I'm having a cigarette. But I thought about the explaining it this way today, and I want to explain it this way just to get it out of the context of dating and boys talking to girls and all this other stuff. Because, of course, I'm being accused of sexism and all this other shit, but you cunts can all kick my ass. So let's say you're at a party, and you meet somebody at the party you've never met before in your life, and it's somebody you're not sexually interested in, it's the wrong gender for you, whatever, it has nothing to do with sex, but you say to this person, you know, shit, I got stranded here, my friend's left, I really need a ride home. And is it, is it, I live over here, is there any chance you'd be able to give me a ride home? So that person, in answering that question for you, 
owes you the truth of saying yes or no and meaning it. So let's say the person says no. The person says, no, I'm not going to give you a ride home. The person owes you that level of honesty. But now as for why that person does not want to give you a ride home, he does not owe you or she does not owe you that level of honesty. If this person chooses to lie and say, I can't give you a ride home because I live in the opposite direction, or I can't give you a ride home because I don't have enough gas, those things might be lies, but that, that does not affect your life the way being lied to about giving you a ride home does. That lie does not cause you to waste your time, life, resources, money, so forth and so on. Now, of course, also, the person doesn't have to, does not necessarily have to lie about it because the person does not owe you an explanation. If I say to somebody, would you give me a ride home after this party, and they choose to say no, I personally would never say to them, why not? Because they don't owe me that, and I would never ask for it. Some of us, however, and like I said, I, I fall in this trap myself sometimes. I'll say no to somebody, and I feel a need to justify it. We don't have a need to justify that. We really don't. Just be honest with your yes or your no. You know, tell people, tell people what you're going to do and then do it. Don't make promises you're not going to keep. And there's no need to justify the promise you're not going to keep. Just be honest. I'm not going to do this. Whatever this is, go on a date with you, give you a ride home, have anal sex with you, you know, bear your children, pay off your car payments, you know, whatever it is. Just be honest, are you going to do it or not? If you say you are, do it. If you're not going to do it, just say you're not going to do it. You don't need to give people justifications. And if you're the person receiving the no, keep in mind other people don't have to justify saying no to you, especially if there are people you don't know that well. Now, if it's like your mother or your girlfriend or your wife or your children, that's a more close, intimate relationship. That's a different level. Can, I'm talking about casual acquaintances. I'm talking about you go up to some girl and you're hitting on her and you want to go out. I'm talking about you meet somebody at a party and you need a ride home. Okay, I'm not talking about long-term relationships with people that you've known for a long time and trust and all. So that's a totally different ball of wax. So that was seven minutes to get to the point. Today, I ran into girl number B who was sorry she gave me false hope and just did not have time to go out, even though she said she did. So she goes past me and she says, hey, how's it going? And I said, hey, what's up? Later, she comes by again and she stops to chit chat. How's it going? Blah, 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 blah. So then I'm getting ready to leave and I say, yo, babes, little hot redhead with freckles. What's up? And she informs me that she is quitting her sorority because she does not have time. And then she informed me she's quitting her job because she has enough money saved up she doesn't need to work for a while. To which I said, great, now you have time to go out, don't you? To which she said, yes, except only now I have a boyfriend and he would have to come with us. And I said, well, that rather defeats the purpose so we don't have to tell him. She said, well, he's a really jealous type which gives me a lot to work with in the future. So then I said, well, I don't really care. We're going out anyway, because now you have the time, don't you? And she says, yeah, but I can't, I'll text you, but I can't text you. Be, I know, she, which is actually kind of what she said. She said she would text me, but it would be difficult to text me because her boyfriend reads her text messages. Now we can talk about in the future, I'm sure I will talk about <laughs> the, the pure lo that was me laughing and getting my hair in my mouth at the same time. That was brilliant. In the future, we'll talk about, and I've talked about it in the past, why women are in relationships with assholes. Now, I mean, look, guys, if you have to read your girlfriend's text messages, because you're so terrified she's going to hang out with other guys. Because she told me, she, my boyfriend doesn't let me hang out with other guys. She doesn't, he doesn't let me text boys. Girls, if your boyfriend is that fucking paranoid and clingy, 
and possessive, you're dating somebody with a mental problem. And boys, if you 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 can't fucking I know the government can do it. Okay, the NSA can monitor your girlfriend 24 hours a day, but you can't. And guys, if you can't trust her, then you shouldn't she shouldn't be your girlfriend. I mean, it's pathetic on both accounts. It's pathetic that women put up with being treated that way. And of course, you fucking whores out there and you cunts and you femistatists are wondering why I come on this podcast and I call you cunts and whores and femistatists. And you allow yourselves to be treated like this. Well, that's why. You know, it's partially because you vote for Obama who murders people in foreign countries with flying robots. It's partially because you think somebody owes you free birth control. It's partially because you think you make less money than men, even though you don't. And it's because you, you, know, and you these are the men that you date. What is wrong with you women? I mean, do you, do, is it because you're stupid? I, my, one of my theories, of course, is because women look for dominant, powerful men, but because so many women are so dumb, they can't distinguish dominance from being an asshole, right? They, they confuse assholeness with being powerful and dominant and capable because they don't know what powerful, dominant, and capable really looks like. Now I hope this girl's not crazy because she's real. She she's really fucking adorable, and I do like her from just our few interactions that we've had. So we'll find out. Anyhow, to get back to the story, and and then guys, let, let me finish this up. And then guys, boys, boys, because I I know I rag on the girls a lot. We we all know that, right? The fucking feminazis hate me, but let's take a moment to talk to the boys. Okay, boys. If you're monitoring your girlfriend's text messages, you have a fucking problem. Because you know what? As the story I'm telling may or may not prove, I can guarantee... Listen to me. Oh, oh, read. There's a book. You can get it on Amazon.com. You can get it in a Kindle version. It's not very much. It's called The Key Logger. That's key as in K-E-Y. Logger, L-O-G-G-E-R. What that is, it's a piece of software you put on a computer that logs the keystrokes. It was written by a guy who used his keylogger on his computer to get the passwords for 10 of his girlfriends to go in and read their Facebooks and emails. And every one of them was fucking around on him. Okay, guys, if you think you're going to prevent your girlfriend from having sex with other men by reading her text messages and you know telling her she can't go places with other guys, and all that shit, you've already lost. Because women are going to have sex with who they want to have sex with, and you're not going to stop them by reading their text messages. And if your girlfriend wants to have sex with guys who aren't you, that you know, we can say something about women being hypergamous and all this other stuff, and all that's legit, and I've talked about it a gazillion times. But ultimately, if your girlfriend wants to fuck somebody who's not you, that's your problem. You're the one who's not fulfilling whatever needs she has. And those might be sexual needs, those might be psychological needs, those might be emotional needs, they might be financial needs, it might be a combination of all those. It could be other things as well. But if your girlfriend wants to fuck other people, ultimately, is she contributing to that? Of course she is. But ultimately, that's on you, goddammit. That's fucking on you. So you fucking boys out there need to get your shit together. So anyhow, she says she'll go out with me, but she, she can't text me because her boyfriend monitors her texts. So I said, well, put me in your cell phone as Alice. And she's like, okay. So I am now in her cell phone because she had me in her cell phone, but she deleted me. So she put my number back in her cell phone as Alice. And she promised. I made her. I'm like, are you? You're not bullshitting because you lied to me once. You promised. No, I promised. She 100% promised. Now, again, it remains to be seen if that pans out, and nobody will be surprised if it doesn't. And you know, I'll don't worry. I'll update you on this. But the point is, despite her clingy, possessive boyfriend who reads her text messages and doesn't let her go any place with other guys and doesn't let her text other guys and all this other shit. She agreed to go out with me. 
and she put me in her cell phone as Alice. So all I want to say is for you dumbass boys out there who don't trust your girlfriends and treat your girlfriends like shit and read their text messages and all this other fucking insecure shit, because that's what it is. It's insecurity on your part. It's insecurity on your part. I know it. You know it. If your girlfriend has more than 17 brain cells, she knows it. Okay. You're insecure. And you can't fix your insecurity by reading your girlfriend's text messages. You can't do that. You have to fix your insecurity by locating your motherfucking spinal column and your ball sack. And remember, when your girlfriend is texting Alice about getting together, Alice is actually the great one himself. And I am going to do everything in my power to fuck the shit out of your cute little red-headed freckled girlfriend. And if I can take her away from an undeserving piece of garbage like you, I will do it in a heart fucking beat.